Welcome to a tutorial about blueprints in Jamf Now. Blueprints are at the very core of how you bundle together applications, security settings, and even restrictions into one centralized place, and then assign devices in your Jamf Now account to that blueprint. So starting here on my dashboard, I'll navigate to Blueprints on the left-hand menu and click there. You'll see f uh, four blueprints that I have pre-populated here. I could have one, I could have 99. There's no limit on the number of blueprints. Just choose a number that makes sense for your organization and teams. So I'll click on sales and we can take a deeper dive into this sales blueprint. Now, the first thing you notice is that a new sub menu has appeared right here. And this contains all of the different ingredients that I will be bundling together with this blueprint. So we'll start with applications. I've got two applications currently deployed to every device in this blueprint, and that's Box and DocuSign, two very big uh, applications in the enterprise space. If I'd like to add more, well, we're in luck. I have pre-configured a number of applications to already be connected from the App Store to my Jamf Now instance. Now this list that you're seeing right here, I have chosen these applications. If you do not see your apps here, but they're available on the App Store, have no fear. That is a step you'll do before diving into a blueprint. And you would do that in the main apps menu right here. But once they're connected, and once you have that app from the App Store connected to your Jamf Now instance, then we can click right here and add that app. So I could maybe scroll down and select, let's say Evernote and click add apps right there. That would populate it on this list and it would automatically deploy wirelessly over the air to every device in this blueprint. Now the second option on my new sub menu here within my sales blueprint is web clips. And web clips are a really versatile tool. Their most obvious use is directing a user right to a web page. And that's what you'll see right here. You can give this a custom name and a custom icon and then a URL. So this could say uh, perhaps jamf.com. And what this icon would look like is whatever I tell it to look like right here. And when that user, either on a Mac OS device or an iOS device, clicks that icon, it will look very similar to an application. It will open a web browser window and automatically go to the URL, like jamf.com, that I tell it to go to right here. But we have a couple of tricks up our sleeve with web clips in particular, and the first is a mail to link. So this is really interesting because it's using the same technology. It's just a web clip, but instead of clicking that icon and being taken to a web page, if I enter mail to with no space and then a colon and then enter an email address right here, this will actually open up a, a new uh, window from my email client and pre-populate that address in the to field. So I'm very quickly sending an email off to our support team, our sales team, and administrative team. You can imagine all of the different uses for the mail to uh, prefix. We can also use the TEL prefix. And this is interesting because a lot of our teams make phone calls to the same phone number throughout their workday. They're calling a home office, they're calling colleagues or a supervisor or a particular vendor. This is a really easy way to make an icon on their home screen, either on a mobile device or a computer, have kind of one click or one touch access to that individual, to wherever this phone number goes. You can also do a text to, and this is uh, kind of another way to leverage mobile technology, but text to, and then enter a phone number right there. This will pull up, again, uh, just as it sounds, a text message to this phone number. This is great for kicking off automated processes if you have that in place on your business side, or again, just texting a colleague or somebody else at the office. So web clips, very versatile. Once you configure one, you will see it populated right here. Under the security tab, we essentially have two high level options. So I will uncheck this and just show you the two options first, then we'll dive back in. The first of course is require a passcode. And I think, you know, we are far enough along in the internet age that uh, we should all really be requiring passcodes on our internet and company connected devices. That's just a great step to be more secure. If I check that, a number of sub options appear. I can make it complex, alphanumeric, a minimum length and so forth. There are really a number of ways that I can kind of go through and tailor this 
uh, requirement to my specific organization. Now, I will uncheck this and collapse that menu. And then just talk about this second option right here, enable File Vault 2. Now, File Vault 2 uh, comes directly from Apple. So we are supporting Apple technology in this case. And what this does is allow you to enable something called full disk encryption on specifically Mac OS devices. So a lot of folks use this already, but it's a manual process. And you find yourself walking around the office, manually engaging encryption, which takes a lot of time, right? You kind of have to get up, find the person. If they're out in the field, it's even more cumbersome. This is a great way to say every Mac OS device that's assigned to this blueprint, if I check this box, will automatically kick off File Vault encryption. This is so useful if you have any devices that are out and about in the field, carried in someone's pocket or in their laptop bag. Because in the event that somebody gets access to that machine or it's stolen, this is a really great way to have another layer of security present on that device. You're protecting company data, you're protecting customer data. Now the next menu, email, I think we can all agree this is something that we as IT workers or those of us responsible for IT systems and tools, we have to deal with this. But our teams don't. In fact, I think a lot of teams outside of IT would rather not see something like what kind of account do you have? and what is the mail server information. This is stuff that's really over the head of a lot of people that just don't need to deal with this level of detail. So let's deal with it for them. Let's enable them to get to work and be more efficient faster than ever. I'll first of all choose my account type, Exchange, Google, Yahoo, or something else right here. And then depending on what I choose, a number of sub options appear. I configure that once right here, kind of take care of that for my team scroll to the bottom and then I would click save changes and that email account is set up and ready to go uh, again on every device in this blueprint. Moving on another menu down we're talking about Wi-Fi this time but I think the same conversation applies. I don't think uh, many of us enjoy scrambling looking on whiteboards for Wi-Fi passcodes or asking around an unfamiliar office that you're maybe visiting for the day or the week uh, how to get online. What I can actually do with Jamf now and our Wi-Fi menu here within Blueprints is pre-configure authentication for Wi-Fi hotspots. This is really great if I maybe spend my entire career in let's say the Minneapolis office, right? Way up north, but then I need to get on a plane and there's something going on with customers or a vendor something's happening down in Austin and I need to go show up in Austin. Maybe I've never been to the Austin office before. Well, I can walk through that front door with confidence knowing that my devices, because they're managed with Jamf Now and this blueprint, they will automatically connect to this hotspot in the Austin office. Very powerful. It's a big time saver. And I think for a lot of folks, it's just kind of one of those convenience things that's a real quality of life improvement from IT. Next up is the restrictions menu, and this is really the kind of meat and potatoes of blueprints. This is a very deep menu. Now, I'm going to talk through these uh, at a fairly high level here today. What I want to encourage you to do is grab a cup of coffee and move through this menu on your own as well. It'll take you about five minutes, but it's really worth your time. What you need to do is move through these sub menus and decide which of them makes sense for your organization. Again, I'll talk at a high level, but I don't know your company as well as you know your company. So take that time, take those five minutes and definitely give this a read on your own. You will see things that I will not today. Now, beginning at the top, the applications menu. This is, I think, by far our biggest sub menu within restrictions, and you can see why. A lot of really powerful options here. You can disable installing applications. You can disable deleting applications. And moving down further, I can actually start to turn off core parts of my devices, like the camera and Safari, things like messages and podcasts further down. Now, thinking of security, I think we've all heard about cookies and cross-site tracking. It's really been in the news lately. Uh, that is something you can also disable right here in the apps submenu within restrictions in a blueprint. Scrolling down a bit more, I'm just gonna show you briefly the options available here, and then I will move to the top and collapse this apps menu. Moving on to security and privacy here. 
We've got, again, a number of kind of uh, powerful options within this menu, and it is a fairly deep menu as well. Uh, first of all, I do want to call out disabling screenshots in compliant environments, sensitive environments. I'm thinking of banking, healthcare, uh, government facilities. This is really a need more than a want, right? This is very critical. We can do things like disable connecting with computers. Again, kind of taking a step to become more secure tomorrow than we are today. I can also remove the ability for my teams to wipe their devices. Now, if I'm sitting here thinking, my team should not go and wipe a device without my involvement. I should know before company and customer data is wiped, right? Well, check this box and every device in this blueprint will lose the ability to wipe that piece of hardware. Very powerful feature. We also have some cutting edge tech like Touch ID and Apple Watch that, hey, if you don't use this technology or it just makes your company a little uneasy, you're not sure if you want to support that yet, have no fear with Jamf Now. It's one checkbox and I can disable that technology right here. Now moving on to networks and cell. This is a shorter menu, but I want to call out a couple of things here. First of all, Wi-Fi whitelisting. You remember setting up the Wi-Fi hotspots in a previous menu. Well, if I want to only allow connections to those hotspots, to Wi-Fi hotspots that I explicitly set up in this Wi-Fi menu, I can do that right here. I'll check this box and then every Wi-Fi hotspot is blacklisted. I cannot, if my device is in this blueprint, connect to any hotspot except if they are explicitly configured right here in the Wi-Fi menu of this blueprint. I can also at the bottom here disable VPN configuration. Specifically in education, this is a very powerful message. You can imagine that content filtering is uh, just vital to a safe and healthy education environment. Well, we can prevent VPN configuration in use, which really is designed in a lot of ways to get around those systems, right? Maintain the integrity of your education network by disabling VPN configuration right here iCloud, I think, is a technology that uh, uh, some people use it and love it. They rely on iCloud, for example, for document sharing, uh, cloud document storage. If you do not use iCloud at all and you're thinking that might be something we just don't want to enable, period. Well, that's no problem. You can move through this menu and very quickly check these uh, boxes in sequence and disable iCloud on your company devices. The same thing is true for Siri. Maybe you just don't have a business use for Siri. Have no fear, you can disable Siri right there with a single checkbox. Email. Perhaps you set up your company email account right here. You want people to use that account and only that account. Well, by checking this box, I can say, hey, we're going to prevent adding, removing, and even modifying accounts, again, on every device in this blueprint. Very easy to do. Now, wallpaper, a smaller option here, but still important to a lot of small and medium businesses, prevent changing the wallpaper. And this would be something where you can actually use our system, we'll get to this in a minute, to deploy custom wallpapers, and then check this box to prevent your employees from changing that wallpaper once you've deployed it right here. That's a great way just to make sure that company devices are kind of up to company brand standards, right? The final menu option here is actually fairly new for us. Uh, this is something called OS updates and specifically delaying OS updates. This is the ability to delay the availability of a brand new iOS or Mac OS update. So you can imagine uh, it's a certain time of year and perhaps there's a new update for iOS. Everyone gets excited, but you as the IT admin or person in charge of IT says, well, hold on. I would like there to be a small window between when Apple releases that new software and when we adopt it because I need time to test. I really need time to adopt that on a test device and make sure our critical systems can work with that new software. Well, all I do is check this box and choose an interval between five days and 90 days. That gives me time to do the testing and at the end of this period of time, whatever I select here, that update is automatically available to my team. I do not need to take any additional action. It just magically appears. So that is the restriction menu, folks. A lot of content, and again, like I said, really grab a cup of coffee, move through this on your own. Moving on down, single app mode is a very interesting use case. This is something 
uh, that folks in retail, hospitality, small business love because it allows you to take these multifunction devices like iPhone, like iPad, and transform them into a very powerful single use device. So I'll choose from this menu here one of a number of options that I have. And this, of course, is dynamic if I install uh, perhaps a point of sale system that could appear right here. I can lock this into any application that I choose, perhaps box, and make that a single function device. Every device in this blueprint is now locked into the box application. You can imagine using this for sales in the field or again point of sale at a retail facility or a, a restaurant, something like that. Now the final option in our blueprint here is wallpaper and this is pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure you find wallpaper that is the correct uh, size. Just do a Google search and find the correct size for the devices you are deploying to and you can do home screen and lock screen right here by uploading those images. The final option is the devices menu, and this is where you go to see every device that's currently assigned to this individual blueprint. Now I can add more by clicking add a device, and this will allow me to very quickly pull devices that are currently assigned to other blueprints. Now remember, these are already enrolled, these are under management, but they're assigned to different blueprints. So I can select one of them here, I can select many of them from this menu and very quickly migrate them over to this blueprint by clicking add devices. I can also of course remove devices by clicking the ellipses at the end and clicking remove. That's a walkthrough of blueprints in Jamf Now in a nutshell. If you still have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Jamf Now support.